G'day Bodgies and Widgies and welcome back to the channel. Today we're doing a care guide on the Silver Dollar. I know I didn't announce anything about getting these fish, however they were gifted to me by my amazing viewer Irene. She reached out to me saying that there was some Silver Dollars that she was wanting to rehome and I was just thinking these are going to be, you know, just your medium sized Silver Dollars, 10 centimetres maybe. When I saw them in person, they were huge and they're the silver dollars we're going to have a look at today and um, I'm going to take you through the ins and outs about everything you need to know about these fish. But before we get into this care guide, as always, let's thank the traditional custodians of the land, the land I'm filming on, the land that you're watching this video on and the amazing people that are managing our land, like our border force, our councils, our park rangers, everyone amazing like that, you know who they are. But I say enough talking, let's have a look at my new and amazing silver dollars. One of the most recognised species of aquarium fish is the silver dollar, and it's a wonderful and eye-catching aquarium species from South America. A subspecies of the tetra and a close relative of the feared piranha, the silver dollar is popular worldwide due to its compatibility, size, variations in species, and behaviour. There are over 50 different species of silver dollar, which all come from the winding waters of the Amazon River, and with so many different species, there is almost definitely a silver dollar species for everyone. Some of the common species include the spotted silver dollar, striped silver dollar, and the one that we're going to be having a look at today, which is the common silver dollar. In my aquarium, I have a total of six silver dollars, four of which are common and two of which are spotted. But now that we've had a brief introduction, let's look a little bit more in depth about their care. The common silver dollar, being the most readily available of all the silver dollar species, is highly underrated for its colour. Though as juveniles they just have a bland sort of plain tin foil silver, as they age I find that they just get better and better. With my adult silver dollars they have a gradient of silver where it's this ashy grey and very metallic grey as well with some bright platinum almost glitter like scales which form in groups around their body. Their dorsal fin also has a very unique spot pattern and most notable is the deep rusty orange and red they develop on their gill plates and fins which is most commonly associated with the red belly piranha. I only truly appreciated the fantastic colours that silver dollars have when I really observed my adult silver dollars up close and in comparison to most fish we find in a South American aquarium which have a lot of earthy colours of browns and blacks, the silver dollar adds a great stark contrast of colour to this. In terms of growth as well, this is where the common silver dollar really blew me away. They're usually purchased at around the 5 to 6 centimetre mark and are fairly fast growing, reaching around about 16 to 17 centimetres in their first year. And I always thought this was the maximum size that they reached out at until I saw these four. In reality, given the time and space, they will reach upwards of 25 centimetres or close to a foot long when fully grown and that is both crazy and amazing at the same time. The biggest of my four common silver dollars has got to be the largest silver dollar I've ever seen in person, and it just goes to show how deceiving it can be when you see these little 20 cent sized fish at your local aquarium store at their retail size. When they're juveniles, silver dollars tend to be far more active and you really see that constant schooling behaviour. But as they age, I find they can be a bit more stationary in their swimming, but they still need a large aquarium. I personally wouldn't recommend keeping adult silver dollars in anything under a 680 litre tank, which is 180 centimetres long, 60 centimetres wide and 60 centimetres tall because of how massive they get and I feel like my silver dollars are a testament to this. My aquarium is 5 feet by 2 feet by 2 feet and in the next year these silver dollars are 100% getting an upgrade to a bigger tank. 
The other thing I'd recommend is to get silver dollars in a decent school of at least six to 10, because it will really make a massive difference in just making them feel more comfortable, be more active and less skittish in the aquarium. And talking about that, I found that they can be a very flighty fish at times as well. If you close a door too hard or move too fast in a way, these silver dollars will get scared and just torpedo and bash around in the tank and it can be fairly dangerous for them and set this um, almost panic mode with all of your other fish in the tank as well. So the aquascape does need to be designed to an extent around them, just making sure that you give them a large open space. And I'd also really recommend a sand substrate because it acts as a buffer for them when they decide to nose dive into the sand. And I'll definitely be taking this as a consideration when I upgrade their tank. I'm gonna be minimizing the amount of rock that I have in the tank and switching it to a smooth river stone and less tall wood will make sure they have the space they need. If you do add silver dollars to a new aquarium, I'd suggest to keep the lights off for the first two to three days, don't feed them and really let them settle in. After that, slowly, slowly ramp up the lights because this will really minimize their sporadic torpedo behavior. You'll notice this happening when you see this sort of dust cloud of glittery silver scales floating around the water and some scratches that you'll notice on them. Generally, it's not too bad, but you never want to put your fish in a stressful position if they don't need to be. Also, being a tropical species, I'd say do keep them in warmer water. Anywhere from 24 degrees to 28 is fine because the warm water will make them more active. They have a better feeding response and it's just better for their health overall. Now comes the age old question of if they can be kept with plants. Me personally, I have kept silver dollars in the past with plants, but it's a massive hit or miss for these guys. If you are looking to add plants though, I'd say try out the terrific trio being Valisneria, Java Fern, and Anubius, because these are bulletproof plants for starters, and they are unlikely to be eaten by the silver dollars. But then again, these are herbivores, and if they get hungry enough, they will eat any plants, um, so they are definitely on the menu. This then leads us into their feeding. Now, if you buy silver dollars as juveniles, they are super, super easy to feed. They take to a wide range of both floating and sinking foods, will take to pallets, flakes, frozen foods, and everything else that you feed them. And they will also eat fruits and veggies like bananas and zucchini, and basically any other thing that you would feed to your plecos, silver dollars will eat as well. My go-to would just be a good quality palette because it can actually assist in wearing down their teeth. And they do have these really weird human-like teeth when you look at it up close. And here's a picture of their larger counterpart, the Paku. And you can just see how creepy, teethy, weird fish these are. But palettes are just super convenient and less messy to feed in comparison to other aquarium foods. Though silver dollars are also considered to be a herbivore, they can eat protein-based food to an extent, so they are basically omnivores, but consider their diet to be very similar to African cichlids. It's better to go with the herbivore-based food. One good tip is to feed them a food high in a staxithin as well, because it will really develop the reds in the silver dollars and make them look a bit more like piranhas, which is always an added plus point. When we look at compatibility and tag mates that silver dollars can go with, they're a perfect fish to add to a South American themed aquarium, and I wouldn't look at anything else honestly. They get big enough where they aren't easy prey for large South American cichlids, and they just add a lot of colour, population, and activity to the tank. I would recommend keeping them with a wide range of semi-aggressive and peaceful South American cichlids like Severans, Geophagus, Black Belt cichlids, some other oddball South Americans like Flagtail Prochelotus, Black Ghost Knives, and they would even be fine with Oscars. I would, however, lean to the side of caution when you're keeping them with highly territorial and large mouth South American cichlids like jaguar cichlids, dovi, and an adult 
peacock bass because these are fish that can easily just pester and pester the silver dollars or just eat them in one large mouthful. But they can be kept with medium-sized tetras as well if you want to go the more community side aspect. But just avoid anything smaller than their mouth and maybe anything with flowing fins. And speaking about that, one thing I have noticed, especially when silver dollars are juveniles, is that they can be a bit fin nippy, so just keep that in mind and avoid things like angelfish. Now that we've seen everything you need to know in terms of care, how and where do you go about buying the common silver dollar, most if not all proper aquarium stores will have the common silver dollar in stock and they're really affordable as well, usually sold at the 5 to 6 centimeter mark at around about $10 a fish in Australia, they're a great way to fill out the tank. When you go to buy them, look for the ones with full fins, little scratches, and the actively swimming ones. The other thing is, I couldn't think of any way to say this, but also just look for the silver dollars that have a little bit of meat to them. Um, when you buy fish like cichlids, it's really easy to look for ones with sunken bellies and avoid those, but with silver dollars, just avoid the really thin ones. Um, silver dollars are also commonly sold by aquarists looking for other fish, and they can be picked Picked up at a very affordable price at around $20 for an adult sized fish, sometimes even cheaper if you buy them in a big school. So overall, they're very easily found, very easily affordable, and just a great way to add a lot of fish to the tank. Thumbs up to the vegan piranha. Alrighty, budgies and widgies, I really hope you enjoyed that um, care guide of the silver dollar. Whenever I make these care guides, you guys just send it out of the ballpark, make them get a few thousand views, and I'm entirely confident that you'll do the exact same thing with the silver dollar care guide as well. Now, in the tank, there were spotted silver dollars. If you're wondering if their care differs or anything of that sort, absolutely not. As a matter of fact, they're exactly the same. I have found the spotted silver dollars to be a bit more active because of that smaller size that they have, and they're a great alternative if you don't want a massive aquarium to keep um, common silver dollars because spotteds get way, way smaller. I'll have a bit of a write-up about them in the description because I didn't want to make a, an entirely separate video um, just repeating the same things. But if you also did want to read... Um, what was this? If you also want to read about the Silver Dollar Care Guide, I've got the entire script of this video in the description as well. So that way you can read instead of watching if you'd like to do so as well. But um, just a huge thank you. We are also at 600, almost at 600 subscribers. So if you're watching this video or um, you've stumbled upon my channel and you haven't subscribed already, um, I would really appreciate if you did so. You don't have to, but it is an essential and necessary part of my development and growth on this YouTube channel. But um, just a massive thank you for all the support that you've given me so far. I will be expecting your comments and all of that because I love replying to those and um, knowing if you keep these fish or not. But um, yeah, that's as far as it is from me. A huge thank you. And Irene, massive thanks for these silver dollars. You could have sold them or given them to someone else. But the fact that you rehomed them to me just really means a lot. The goldfish are also doing well. I just spoiled it, didn't I? Well, you may have seen them in the reflection whilst I did this but um, I have goldfish now but that's a video for the future as always stay happy stay safe stay as Australian Bodgy and the silver dollars out <laughs>